Good morning, dear friends. We are about to begin this Mass of the Lord's Supper. This Mass is going to be offered for all our patients here at World to Read. We pray and ask God's intervention for their healing and speedy recovery. We also pray for all those who are sick around the world. Pray and ask that they may feel the power of God's presence from this altar. This Mass is also going to be offered for our medical workers, our doctors, nurses, first responders. We pray for researchers. Pray for all those who are working so hard to combat this virus. That God may provide strength and guidance. We pray for world leaders. That we may all come together at this time of great trial. To breach our differences and work for the good of our race. Also like to pray for those who have died. Pray and ask that God may grant them rest and peace. Pray for those who are left behind to greet their passing. That God may provide comfort, strength, and healing. I'll invite you to bring your intentions at this time to the altar of God's sacrifice. Our opening hymn today will be Table of Plenty. We are invited to this table of plenty. Come to the feast of heaven on earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that you need. Here at the table of plenty. O oh, come and sit at my table. Where sins and sinners are friends, I wait to welcome the lost and lonely to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven on earth, come to the table of plenty, God will provide. For all that we need here at the table of plenty. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, today, May 1st, we celebrate the memorial of St. Joseph the Walker. And on this May 1st, we also begin the month of our Blessed Mother. And so we ask her prayers and ask the prayers of great St. Joseph at this time of great peril. St. Joseph watched over Jesus, made sure he was safe. We pray that he may watch over us and our families and guarantee our safety as well. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. For the sick and the troubled, we ask, O oh God, that they may feel the graces for healing. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. For the fearful and those who are losing, losing hope in you, we ask, dear God, for your light. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For the dead and for those in fear of dying, that they may find courage and strength. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set for us to do and attain the rewards you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading today is a reading from the Acts of the Apostles. 
so still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest in the synagogue of Damascus and asked him for letters that if he should find any men or women who belong to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you'll be told what to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice, but could see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Lord, here I am. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask for the house of Judas, for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him, that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man, what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And there he has authority from the chief priests to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before, Gentile king, before Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. And I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me to you. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. When he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Hallelujah. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. 
the Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of him, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, um, there are a few things I'd like to reflect with you today. First, we celebrate the memorial of St. Joseph. So it's first May. All around the world today is Walker's Day because St. Joseph represents, it's, it represents our call to change the world through our skills, our talents, our abilities, and God is given us countless abilities to bring out to this world things that no one ever imagined. And what, what a time to reclaim those potentials that God has given to us, the ability, the capacity to do the impossible, the unimaginable. That, that is the creativity that has made this world what it is. Think about what human beings have been able to do, whether it is, first of all, being able to fly or being able to live under water. Think about the skills and talents God is blessed the human race with. It is one that has helped us to solve and face every challenge life is thrown at us. And that's why I have courage and confidence that we can also deal with this moment. It's a challenge that we can deal with it because there are people out there right now tapping into that calling that God has given us. Our God is a walker. For seven days, he walked. For six days, he walked, building this world in all its magnificence and glory. And we carry that resemblance of our Father as walkers. Jesus says, my Father goes on walking, and so do I. And he passed on that responsibility of walking to every one of us. So, so today, we celebrate, and we celebrate walking as a calling. But it breaks our hearts too, because at, at, this, is, this is a time where a lot of us, have no work, are out of work. And not because they don't want to work, because there is no work right now. And we call on St. Joseph, you know, to help us at this time, especially people who would wish they were working and cannot work, to recognize where God is going to lead them post coronavirus epidemic, how to bring their ingenuity and their creativity and the potentials God has given to them to continue building a more thriving world that God has entrusted to us. That's completely possible because we have an advocate in this amazing human being, St. Joseph, praying for you, interceding for you. Now you realize what Joseph did. Yeah, he wasn't the biological father of the Lord. Yeah, he's not your biological father. He's not my biological father. But he is your father, my father. He is a father of the church. Why? Because God entrusted to him that duty of protecting the Lord. That means protecting the head of the church. But you cannot protect the head of the church without also protecting the body that is, it, that is you and I, every one of us. So St. Joseph wasn't just out there to protect Jesus. 
but was also to protect every one of us because we make up the body of the church while Christ is the head of that church. So he is your guardian. He is your protector. He is my guardian. He is my protector. And so today we ask him to do for us what he did for the Lord Jesus when by night he made sure the Lord was safe, made a scary and dangerous journey, protecting our blessed mother and protecting the boy Jesus on the trip to Egypt and back to Galilee and raised him up and gave him the training, the best training to be the successful man that Jesus turned out to be. That's my prayer for every one of us, especially those who are right now out of jail. That this wonderful man may be there with you, guiding you and giving you courage and confidence to trust that sure, you can survive this moment, but not just survive this moment, you could turn this moment to be the best thing that ever happened in your life. That's the first thing I want to say as we celebrate today. But today we also begin the month of our Blessed Mother because May is a month we dedicate to our Blessed Mother. And Pope Francis has recommended that every family, now there's plenty of time, we all have time, that every family create space and time in your own home and invite this wonderful woman, the mother of our Savior, into your own home. Listen, no one ever invited our blessed mother into their lives and didn't get a difference. Think about the wedding at Cana in Galilee in John's Gospel, the second chapter. When she came in there, the Bible tells us they had no wine. She turned to the Lord and said, they have no wine. And of course, the Lord did exactly what she wanted. They got the best wine imaginable. The best wine anyone had ever brewed or tapped. That's who, he, that's who she is. So if you can bring her into your home, remember when she visits Elizabeth and Zechariah and John the Baptist. Scripture says the moment Elizabeth had her greetings, that she was filled with the Holy Spirit and the child in her womb leapt for joy. That's what she brings. Wherever she's invited into, wherever she comes to, because she never comes alone. She comes with her son, Jesus Christ, who is part of her identity. Forever her name is the mother of God. And so she never comes without coming with God. And if you are able to invite her, as Pope Francis has recommended, you can be very sure of this that you will feel something you've never felt before in your life because she is never going to be in your house, in your life, or in your place of work all by herself. She brings the Lord of life with her to you because forever there is that bond between the mother and the son. So I encourage you, and using the words of Pope Francis during this time, make sure you create space in your family for devotion, whether you pray the rosary or any other devotion to our blessed mother, invite her into your home. Let her be the mother of your life, especially at these very perilous times. She knows how to protect her children in dangerous moments. She's always done that. She did that for Jesus. She would do it for you too. And I'd like to close with something that happened here in the first reading. You realize I said Saul was breathing threat on the church and arresting and killing almost everyone and imprisoning anyone he could. Now he was on his way to Damascus. Realize the Christians in Damascus didn't even know Saul was on his way down there. They were still doing their normal businesses and going about their normal life. But there was one who knew that danger was brewing for his sons and daughters in Damascus. It was Jesus. And scripture tells us Jesus intervened when no one else knew what was awaiting them, he intervened and scripture tells us he struck Saul from his horse and then said to Saul, 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 why are you persecuting me? Now realize, why are you persecuting me? Jesus did not say, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting my followers? He says, why are you persecuting me? That means, what the Bible said that you are the apple of God's eye is true. The apple of God's eye. Jesus identifies himself with me, with you, and with every one of us. So he says to Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul was like, who is it 
Lord says, I am Jesus and you are persecuting me. Now, this just didn't happen in Damascus. It still happens today. That Jesus is right now fighting for you. You don't even have an idea. You don't even know it. And every day we are able to be here and do the things we do is because God is fighting battles that we could never fight ourselves and winning battles for us we could never win ourselves. We may not know it, we may never have an idea about it, but that is factually true because he did it on the way to Damascus with Saul, the enemy, for the people of Damascus. He is doing it right now for you. And I hope that we could trust that God is fighting in more ways for us than our eyes could ever see, than our minds could ever hear, or than our, our brains could ever imagine. Because he promised, I am going to be with you right to the end of time. My dear friends, may we feel the power of these three persons in this beautiful family. First, the power of the Lord Jesus, who is fighting for his people when, when, when they have no idea. Then second, the power of St. Joseph, who is the provider and the guardian of all of God's people. And then the power of this amazing woman, all three together on this day. What a, what a wonderful team that God has given to us as his people. My dear friends, remember, if you forget everything I said today, don't forget this, that you are the delight of the Almighty God, that God loves you very much. And I hope you can feel it, and I hope you can hear it, and I hope you can understand it. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we thank you for everything that you do. St. Paul tells us in all things to be thankful because that's our calling in Christ Jesus. So we give you thanks even for this moment of great pain and great danger. We thank you for the people who are sacrificing not just their money, their time, their skills, and their talents to change this world for the rest. We ask, dear God, that you bless them and reward them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are looking for work, those who are out of work, those who would wish they could work. We pray, Almighty God, that as we begin this final push to eradicate this virus, oh God, you may continually inspire us using our patron, St. Joseph, to find new ways of finding work, of creating work, and of working to better our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, dear God, for prisoners. Pray for those, for seniors. Pray for children with physical or mental disabilities. Pray for those on the fringes of society, those who clean our streets, those who are never taken seriously in this world. Pray, dear God, that they may feel the power of your blessing and that they are, they are loved no less than anyone else and that you care for what they do and what they contribute to our world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for parents. Pray especially for parents who are struggling at this time to either provide for their children or just to keep them calm in their anxieties. That you, O God, may provide clear guidance on how parents can do the best on that very trying and difficult circumstances. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our sick. Pray especially for those in critical care those who are barely holding on to life, that the breath of God's Spirit may fill their lungs again and so revive them from their, from their situation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of our womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and the hour for our death. Amen. In bread we bring you, Lord, our bodies, labels. In wine we offer you, our spirits give. We do not ask you, Lord, who is my neighbor, but join united now, one in belief. Oh, we 
have gladly heard your word, your holy word, and now in answer, Lord, a gift we bring, a failing faith make whole, a failing hearts renew, our lives belong to you, our Lord and God. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, it will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine and work of the man hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of Saint Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gift we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and on the commemoration of Saint Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you, and to bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse of the Virgin Mary, the mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord, your son, Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. Giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray using the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, so we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant all peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. My dear friends, from me to you, may the peace of God rest with you. May the peace of God abide with you and your families. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who take away the sins of the world, have grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, look up and behold the Lamb of God. Behold our bread of life. He takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be filled. My dear friends, because at this time we are unable to receive and participate in this meal with the Lord. We pray that the Lord may spiritually meet the needs of everyone desiring his body and blood at this time. May you feel his presence in your hearts and your homes. May you be nourished by his body and his blood to meet every need in your spirit.
each hopeful dream. The chances we have missed, the graces we resist, Lord, in this Eucharist, take hands with me. Let us pray. Having fed upon this heavenly delight, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's examples, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruits of perpetual peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this time to celebrate this great and amazing gift given us by Christ in his church. I pray that you may receive the effects of this sacrifice to meet every need in your life and in your family's life. Um, there will be Mass here on Sunday at 9 o'clock. So if you are able to tune in, please tune in for Mass at 9 o'clock. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and always with your spirit. To the prayers of Saint Joseph and our Blessed Mother, may God bless and keep you and your families, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me.